Hey everybody, it's Party Elite with a beginner's guide to Total War Warhammer. Flying units have one of the greatest advantages possible on the battlefield, mobility. Unhindered by terrain, unfazed by battle lines, these units are free to go wherever they wish, whenever they wish, provided they're kept safe from stronger flying units and ranged fire, of course. And yet, when they land into combat, all mobility is lost, as if the unit has forgotten how to walk, let alone fly. Fixing this problem is easy. Unfortunately, it requires varying degrees of micromanagement. Much like large birds, flying units almost always need a running start to generate the force and speed needed for takeoff. This means they need a clear straight path where they can get to full speed before they'll get off the ground. On a flat surface, it looks like this run-up needs to be at least 30 to 45 meters of clear space, which is quite a bit of open ground. There are a few things to keep in mind to ensure your flying units always have access to such open grounds. At the core, you should try and avoid getting your flying units surrounded by other units. And this includes friendly units, as they will get in the way just as much as enemies. Heroes, such as the Bretonian Paladins, tend to dive into the middle of an enemy unit when they charge in. This can result in them being completely surrounded with minimal effort from the enemy. When this happens, you can look for where the enemy is thinnest around your unit and tell them to move in that direction. They will nudge and push their way in that direction, eventually getting free and running off. Make sure that move order is far enough away so that they take off as quickly as possible. As this is happening though, the hero will take damage without giving any out. This is bad for HP and morale. So, alternatively, you can wait for the unit to perform an attack that topples the enemy over, creating an alley for them to escape through, and then use that alley as the direction of the movement order. In some cases, issuing a move order and reissuing an attack order will force one of the more powerful attacks immediately clearing a way out. With larger flying units, such as lords on their mounts, they typically have enough mass to push most units aside, waltz through them, and take to the air. If you ever find them stuck in place, however, similar orders as you'd give the heroes work just as well. Issuing a move order is often enough, or attacking a neighboring unit. With entire units of flying warriors, things get a little trickier. They don't always have the same type of attack that throws enemy units around, meaning they can't create new avenues as easily as your heroes or lords can. When swooping in to attack with these units, try to maintain a line that is just as wide as the enemy you are attacking. Any wider and your order to fall back might cause some of the individuals that wrapped around to get further stuck in. And any narrower, and you might be inviting the enemy units to surround you immediately after impact. Remember, as with chariots, these units carry momentum which can take them right through the units you targeted into an enemy unit behind them. If you see that is about to happen, or if the enemy unit is exceptionally thin, prepare to give a move order in the same direction as the attack immediately after impact. This will cause your soldiers to hit the ground, hit the enemy, maintain their speed, and almost immediately take back off before they can get stuck. You can also order the move order in the other direction as well, but the unit will lose all momentum. Does this cause a significant amount of damage? No, but it certainly keeps your unit alive, and it can cause some disarray. And keep in mind that you can use other units to help dislodge your flying units as well. For example, if a vital unit of Pegasus Knights is stuck in combat with some anti-large infantry, don't be afraid to send Leon Kerr or some Knights of the Realm in to throw the Spearmen out of their dense formation and quickly get all involved units out of the area immediately. While this can cause some physical damage to your units, it will be spread out and as a result, make any one unit less likely to break. When ordering your units to withdraw and take off, remember that they need something of a runway to do so. This means you can't order them to move in any direction. You have to give them orders that lead them through an empty patch of land for some distance before they'll take off. This means sometimes you'll have to guide them through a maze of enemy units just to give them some clear space. If you don't give them the appropriate direction, they may be intercepted before they're able to take off, and remember, they can be intercepted by your own units as well. On the flip side, if you're trying to pin your enemy's flying units, try to use cavalry. Since cavalry has some mass of its own and isn't as easy to push around, it can be used to hold enemy flying units in place while your spearmen and other anti-large units cut away at them. Of course, if you've got anti-large cavalry, that's the ideal unit to take into the fray. Air superiority is a major advantage on the battlefield, but it's one that can easily be lost with poor management. When you have such a potent weapon in your hands, you need to make sure to wield it carefully. Use flying units for precision strikes from all directions. Keep your opponent guessing and on the back foot, but ensure that, under all circumstances, you give them the attention they need to get out safely. Every type of unit has flaws. You need to recognize these flaws and adapt them in a way that makes them all but disappear. And that's what being a great general is about. For more tips and tricks, subscribe to this channel, and if there's something you'd like to see covered, let me know in the comments below.